In the US, the designated day for love is Valentine's Day, named for the Roman Catholic Saint Valentine. But intertwined with the holiday are depictions of Cupid, a Roman god associated with attraction and erotic love, and who shoots arrows with powers of desire. But he's not the only love deity out there. In fact, societies across time and around the world have their own deities and figures that symbolize many aspects and interpretations of love. Hi, I'm Dr. Smitty Nathan, and I'm an archaeologist. In this video, we're going to explore the archaeology of a handful of love deities from around the world, so let's get into it. In ancient Greece, Aphrodite was not born, but rose out of sea foam, at least according to one origin story. She was the goddess of many realms, including beauty, fertility, motherhood, marriage, sex, power, war, and of course, love. Archaeologists today have found traces of Aphrodite worship across the ancient world, including at the iconic Athenian Acropolis in Greece. Fragments of pottery show the goddess's image in shrines dedicated to her. In western Turkey, archaeologists found a 2,500-year-old temple dedicated to a goddess of love and beauty. They recovered a piece of a statue of a woman, a terracotta bust, and inscriptions that suggest a sacred area dedicated to Aphrodite. Aphrodite was also the mother of Eros, another deity of love who made people fall in love by shooting them with an arrow. And if that sounds familiar, it might be because the Roman counterpart of Eros is Cupid. Cupid's mother is Venus, the Roman version of Aphrodite. Venus is a goddess of love, beauty, and fertility, and she was one of the most important deities in the vast Roman pantheon. And Yes, the planet Venus is named after her. There were shrines and temples dedicated to Venus across the Roman Empire, including in the city of Pompeii, which is famous for having been buried in ash after the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in the year 79 CE. Archaeologists in Pompeii excavated a temple for Venus in one of the most sacred areas of the city in Porta Marina. This sanctuary for Venus is set atop a terrace with spectacular views of the Gulf of Naples. But before there was Venus or even Aphrodite, there was Inanna and Ishtar. Now Inanna was a Sumerian goddess often associated with love and war, while Ishtar was a later Mesopotamian goddess with similar domain. Their relationship with one another is a bit confusing, with some folks thinking they are essentially the same, while others thinking they are distinct. Inanna and Ishtar might even be an example of an important concept when it comes to analyzing ancient deities, and that concept is syncretism. This is when different schools of thoughts, religions, and in this case deities, merge together to form a hybrid of sorts. This is the common theme, and you'll see it again in other parts of this video. So while Inanna and Ishtar's history is both confusing and complex, we do see references to them in the archaeological record. Inanna appears in poetry written over 4,000 years years ago, including works attributed to an Akkadian priestess named Enheoduanna, but more on her later. Various poems often depict Inanna as a beautiful young woman, and we also learn about her lover Dumuzi. The story of Inanna and Dumuzi is considered one of the earliest written love stories, and like many great romances, theirs ends in tragedy. Interestingly, we also learn a lot about Enheoduanna through her poems to Inanna. In the poem Exaltation to Inanna, Enheoduanna both praises the goddess and asks her for help in reclaiming her high priestess position after being exiled. Enheoduanna is sometimes considered the first known named author in literary history. We have archaeological evidence showing the existence of Enheoduanna in the form of an alabaster disc, a carving that shows the poet in a flowing garment and circlet around her head pouring an offering over an altar. Like Aphrodite, Venus, Inanna, and Ishtar, Freya, the Norse goddess, not only symbolized romantic love, but fertility and battle, and was known as a great warrior. She also rode a chariot pulled by two cats. Archaeologists recently identified a two-inch tall gilded silver figurine from a field in Denmark, and based on some of the details like pulled back hair and embellished garments, they believe this figurine might represent Freya. However, there are some elements that might suggest a more masculine and representation like the placement of the brooch. It's likely that we'll never know who is represented by this figurine, but it does point to how many deities in the Norse pantheon embodied androgynous elements. Speaking of not knowing what a figurine might represent, you might have seen figurines from archaeological sites that look like this. These depictions of full-figured women have historically been thought to represent fertility or love goddesses of some kind. These kinds of figurines have been found at Neolithic sites from across the world, including the Middle East and Europe. However, when archaeologists in Turkey at the ancient city of Şatalhöyük found an 8,000-year-old limestone figurine depicting a voluptuous lady, they weren't sure whether she actually represented 
represented a goddess. Instead, the archaeologists suggest that this exceptionally well-crafted figurine actually represents an older woman in the community who achieved elite status. Now let's go to West Africa. In the outskirts of the city of Ashugbo, in the thick forests of southern Nigeria, there are 40 shrines, sculptures, and other pieces of art dedicated to Oshun, the Yoruba goddess associated with femininity, fertility, love, and sensuality. The Oshun Ashugbo Sacred Grove has been a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 2005. It's a religious site where people come to connect with the ancient deity Oshun. The grove is thought to have been founded around 400 years ago. Archaeological excavations have unearthed over 20,000 artifacts including bangles, lamps, knives, and more. People lived in this grove in the 17th century, and archaeological work has helped reveal a bit about their everyday lives. This grove and worship of Oshun is still active today. In fact, much of the artwork at the site is recent and made in the 20th century. Oshun is also considered the River Orisha, and she's not the only love deity with connections to water. Benten, also known as Benzaiten, has strong associations with water and is one of the seven Japanese Buddhist deities of luck, as well as the only female deity in the bunch. She also appears in Shinto shrines due to her syncretic nature. Some of the oldest archaeological remnants we have of Benton worship are a temple dedicated to her appearing to date to the 7th century CE, as well as a statue dating to the 8th century CE. Her domains usually include music, wealth, literature, and art. However, there are shrines where you can pray to the love Benton. In Kobe, Japan at the Himoro Shrine, people can offer heart-shaped votive pictures and even send love mail to Benton in hopes that their love-related prayers will be answered. Worship of Benton at certain shrines seems to be a somewhat modern practice. Benton is also thought to be a manifestation of Saraswati, the Hindu goddess of learning and the arts. Now the Hindu pantheon is extensive and some of the deities have striking similarities to deities in other pantheons. We mentioned Eros and Cupid a little while ago, classical deities who shoot people with arrows to get them to fall in love. But did you know there's a Hindu god that does just about the same thing but while riding a giant green parrot? Kamadeva is the Hindu god of infatuation, desire, and love. While Eros and Cupid are often depicted as chubby little cherubic babies, Kamadeva is portrayed as a handsome young man. His female partner and consort, Rathi, is the goddess of sensual love. According to 3,000-year-old Hindu scriptures, Kamadeva makes his bows and arrows out of sugarcane, honeybees, and flowers. Speaking of flowers, in Mesoamerica, a prince of flowers presided over summer, pleasure, dancing, painting, feasting, creativity, and love. His name comes from two Nuahatl words, Sochi, which means flower, and Pili, which means prince. Sochi Pili is also closely associated with maize and cacao, two really important indigenous American foods. This lighthearted god of love and summer appeared in art like sculptures and murals across the Aztec world. He also appears in multiple ancient Aztec written manuscripts known as codices, alongside his twin sister Sochi Quetzal, a goddess associated with fertility, beauty, and pregnancy. In Western Mexico, there is an entire complex centered on the deity Xochipilli, and it was actually a major center of ancient cacao trade. The archaeologists suggest that the majority of ceramic vessels found at sites that worshipped Xochipilli were used to prepare or consume cacao in observance of the deity, usually in the form of feasting. In addition to being the protector of cacao, some scholars think that Xochipilli was also the god of homosexuality and male sex workers. However, it's important to bear in mind that conceptualization of gender and sexuality varied across places and time. So some of the frameworks that we use to describe and categorize gender, sexuality, and love might not capture the nuance, breadth, and ideas that people in the past envisioned. Like many of the love deities we've mentioned, the worship of Sochi Pili has transformed in the present day. For example, artists today have embraced Sochi Pili and interpreted his story in the context of expressing individual gender identities. When it comes to love deities, they are often complex and associated with all kinds of loves and things other than love. Often there are different and conflicting versions and stories surrounding them, as well as an array of modern interpretations of their archaeological record and worship practices. Now, if you're interested interested in learning more about something with different versions, check out our video here on ancient calendars from around the world. That's all for this video and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye!